Hello and welcome back from the break and winter. We're going to jump right into things here and start with chapter 9, in which we're going to study cell cycle, cell reproduction. And here we have um, an image of the cell cycle. And the cell cycle is basically what cells go through after they are created and they grow and they prepare to divide and then they divide and so it encompasses all the things going on inside the cell the steps that are necessary to do what a cell needs to do to get ready to divide again and so we can divide that cell cycle into some steps the cell spends most of its time in what's called interphase and we can think of that it's the phases between cell divisions so a cell is created it and it enters interphase the first step of interphase it's what's known as the G1 and this is basically you can think of this as the step in which it grows okay it's getting larger in size it's producing more organelle if necessary um, and the cell is perhaps doing what it is supposed to do, whatever type of cell it happens to be, a muscle cell, and whatever the case might be. All right. Now, sometimes the cell will just hang out in that step and, again, do what it is supposed to do. But if that cell is going to divide again, it enters what's called the S phase of interphase. And this is, you can think of this as the synthesis phase this is where we basically make DNA or we duplicate the DNA um, in preparation for division because if we're going to take one cell and divide it into two we have to make more DNA or else those two cells will not have enough of it okay we'll go through later the process of how that duplication of DNA happens but just know for now that this is the phase in which this happens all right, then we get into the G2 phase, which is more growth. And basically, whoops, basically we're prepping for division. And in particular, as we'll see, there is a key checkpoint here in G2 in which the cell is checking to make sure that the DNA has been duplicated correctly and that it has grown correctly before it goes in it gets ready to divide all right so then after interphase with g1 s and g2 you go into mitosis which um, is a very important step before the cell actually divides mitosis i think the best way to think of it is as division of the nucleus or duplication of the nucleus. We take within that cell the nucleus and the duplicated chromosomes within it and we essentially rearrange those chromosomes and split those, those nu the nucleus into two separate nuclei such that each of those nucleuses is identical to the other one. Okay, so that when you go into cytokinesis as we'll see each of those two new cells has an identical nucleus, an identical scent of, of uh, chromosomes. And we'll look at the details of mitosis in the next section. Again, it's think of it as division of the nucleus. I mentioned already these checkpoints. You'll see in the cell cycle we have various checkpoints at which, again, the cell is ensuring that things are going correctly before you proceed to the next step. So with the G1 checkpoint here, we ensure that the growth is occurring before we occurring correctly before we enter the S phase. In this G2 stage we ensure that the DNA has been duplicated correctly and again it's growing correctly before we enter mitosis and then the mitosis phase we'll see in little, we'll see in the later um, what's going on there but here we're ensuring that the chromosomes are being rearranged correctly before it actually splits in two. So those checkpoints are important. At this point in the book it mentions uh, apoptosis. You can think of this as programmed cell death. 
And um, of course, you might think of cell death as a bad thing, and sometimes it is. But sometimes you, this, the, the body wants to get rid of older cells, um, and so there's this uh, programmed process of taking that cell and breaking it apart and basically recycling those materials. A good example of thinking of this is, say, with a frog. When a frog is a tadpole, it has a tail, but when it becomes an adult frog, it doesn't no longer has a tail and doesn't need a tail, and so what happens is those cells in the frog's tail are broken down through this process and the materials recycled to be used elsewhere in that growing tadpole and frog. So it's an important process that all living things do. Okay, section two. Now, some of the details of mitosis, but first, let's talk about DNA and chromosomes. Um, so, uh, of course, chromosomes consist of DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, but they also consist of proteins. It's a complex between DNA and proteins. And there are these particular kinds of proteins, these little purple balls here, and they're known as histones. And so when we package up DNA, we first wrap it around a cluster of these histones. And this forms what's called a nucleosome. Okay. And then what we do is we take these nucleosomes with the DNA wrapped around them and they all glom together like you see here and this this uh, complex has a particular width in particular it's about 30 nanometers and so these are known as 30 nanometer fibers okay and so that's sort of the next level of packaging of DNA into chromosomes and so then this 30 nanometer fiber as you can see it begins to bunch up Okay, and at this point we have DNA in a state what we call chromatin, and I believe we talked about this when we talked about cells before and how if we take our cheeks and stain them and the whole nucleus just shows up kind of purplish because the DNA is kind of spread throughout the chromosome and it's in this chromatin state. Okay, again, it's wrapped around nucleosomes and bunched together in these 30 nanometer fibers, which are then sort of folded up. Okay. Well, then what happens is the chromatin, when a cell is getting ready to divide, will even bunch up more into extremely tight bunches that we can see under a microscope. And it's at this, po this point that we can make out the distinct chromosomes, okay? Now, before, when a cell is not dividing and you can't see the chromosomes, they are there. We still have our 46 chromosomes that we have as, as humans. It's just that they're in a more diffuse state, this chromatin state. And we'll see later when it comes to um, making use of specific genes on chromosomes, the chromatin will even spread out a bit more, sort of this nucleosome state, when you're going to make copies of or make use of particular genes. Okay, so this is the levels of the packaging of the chromosome of the DNA into chromosomes. And as you probably know, we have 46 chromosomes and you can see there's there some other species of animals and plants and fungi and the number that they have. Um, while it might seem intuitive to think a more perhaps complex organism will have more chromosomes, you see that's not the case. For example, the goldfish has many more than us. Uh, potatoes and tobacco plants have little more than us. and um, there are some plants, in particular ferns, ferns are notorious for having all sorts of chromosomes. Um, so there's not necessarily a relationship between chromosome number, number and complexity. Um, <clears throat> now, the book mentions these terms at this point, haploid and diploid. And so what this means is, so we have 46 chromosomes, but they come in 23 pairs. And each of those pairs have sort of the same genes on them. So for example, 
we just number the chromosomes. You have a pair of number one chromosomes, a pair of number twos, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so in the pair of number one chromosomes, as you go along that chromosome, they have the same genes on them, a gene that might influence eye color or hair color or something like that. But as we'll talk about later, you can have different forms of these genes such that the gene on this chromosome might be a, say, a dominant gene, and the gene on this chromosome might be a recessive gene. They're the same gene, but they're sort of different forms of the gene. Okay, so when we say haploid, we're referring to just the number of pairs that you have, we might say. So our haploid number, for example, is 23, while our diploid number is 46. And we'll see where this comes into play later when we talk about meiosis and the making of gametes, because we'll see that our gametes, whoops, G-A-M-E-T-E-S, are haploid cells. That is, they have 23 chromosomes, whereas the vast majority of our cells, all the rest of them, are diploid. They have 46 chromosomes in each one. We'll revisit, the, revisit those terms later. Okay, and so you may see this image and think, okay, that's what I think of when I think of a chromosome. It kind of looks like this. But this is, more correctly, what we call a duplicated chromosome. And it consists of two exact copies. This is what a chromosome would look like after the S phase and before mitosis is complete. Each of these arms of the chromosome, what are called chromatids, is an exact copy of each other. They are connected to what's called the centromere, again, consisting of two sister chromatids, and again, we could refer to this as a duplicated chromosome. Okay. So now what we're going to do in mitosis, in preparation for cell division, is we're going to take these duplicated chromosomes and we're going to move them around and pull those chromatids apart. All right, I'm going to stop right here and because I'm running out of time in this video, and we'll do a separate video just for mitosis and cytokinesis because they can be a little complicated, okay?